Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactical Imperialis. Welcome to today's video. Today is going to be an unboxing. Um, and no, it's not Dark Imperium like everybody else probably is doing right now because it, the edition's just come out. Today I want to show you uh, or unbox a little care package I got for myself um, when uh, I came home from university because as you can tell I'm at home now. Um, I finished second year, um, so that's all done, which is great. And I had this little box waiting for me that I... Uh, I wanted to get and I wanted to show you guys uh, what it is and go through it because I get the feeling that most of you won't know either what this type of box is or certainly not particularly the contents of this one. This is the Horus Heresy character series box. Most of you, well those of you who play the Horus Heresy may or may not have one of these. Depends if you own a character who has a model in the character series like Kalos Typhon or Sevatar or Angron for example. And this one is, um, well, I'll just show you. This one is Magnus the Red. Yeah, this is, um, this is my Primarch. This is Magnus the Flippin' Red. Um, apologies for the hype and the fanboying that is almost certainly going to go on during this unboxing because, well, one, shiny new model syndrome, and two, Magnus fanboy all the way. I can't, I, I'm sorry about that. If that annoys you, I apologize, and I know it's not my usual style, but, uh, I'll try and keep it to a minimum, I can't promise anything, I'm only going to get one take at this after all. So, we're going to be getting into this today, and I've got no idea what's in here, it's still in the shrink wrap, as you may be able to tell, um, and I've never actually been into a character series box before, so I don't know what extras you get, or if you get any extras at all, uh, or whether you just get the model and the scenic base, so it's going to be a new experience for most of us, I think, today. So, let's crack this open and see what happens when you order yourself a Primark, or any model from the Horus Heresy character series for that matter. Anyway, let's get on with the unboxing, shall we? So here we are. This is it. I've already taken the shrink wrap off, uh, and I've loosened the lid for the simple reason of it was a bit of a faff, and trying to do it with one hand while recording was not pleasant. I apologize for the shaky cam. I know it kind of sucks. I haven't got an actual camera mount. Uh, it's something I plan to invest in if um, I'm going to be doing more stuff on the go. Um, in the end, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, for the moment you're going to have to put up with shaky cam, I apologise. Hopefully the sound quality is alright though. So, here's the box, and when you take the lid off, ta-da! So, we have a little piece of documentation. Now, I thought this was an assembly guide, and I think it is. Uh, yeah, the documentation kind of fell out the first time, so I had to put it back in when I ripped the lid off. So, there's a little bit of background for you. Magnus the Red, Primarch of the Thousand Suns Legion. Possessed of incredible psychic powers, equipped with some of the finest war gear in the Imperium's arsenal. It said Magnus's form and stature would change as he willed it. It did. Lethal blows missing when moments before they seemed sure to kill him. Armed with his sci-fi serpenta, which I'm assuming is a gun, uh, but I haven't seen any on the um, pre-release stuff, uh, or the images that we got of Magnus, I haven't seen a gun. Uh, and the blade of Arnonurta, which is his sword. Magnus's response was brutally swift and lethal to living creature or battle engine alike. And you get a glorious painted picture. Now mine will not look that good. Uh, I'm debating whether to get him done on commission. I probably won't. I'm going to try and paint him myself. Uh, but there you go. That's how it's supposed to look. Uh, resin dust, warning, not suitable for under 15s, etc. Rules and regulations. And inside, we have a full equipment list. So this is everything you should have in the box. Uh, and interestingly, let's have a look on here. Let's see if we can find his gun, because I didn't see one before. Scenic base, diorama base, rock blast, arms, book, debris, more rock, warp fire, warp fire, warp fire, cape crest, head, hair, body, shoulder horns, hip plates, pauldrons, knee horns, tarouge, feathers... What is a tarouge, actually? Component 30. Okay, what's component 30? Okay, it's one of you. I don't really know what you are. Uh, 34? No, I have no idea what you are. I think they're the... the oh! Oh, they're these things. Oh, they're the little scrolls, tablet thingies. That's interesting. Cape class. Kit includes a spare. Oh, the kit includes a spare one. Ah, good. Good, good, good. I, guess, I expect a cape clasp would be pretty important. Uh, seals, sashes... Uh, the haft of the blade, the blade itself, and then a couple of chains. So no gun. Or if it's listed, the sci-fi serpenter isn't listed here as a component. That's interesting. Uh, maybe it's attached to one of the body parts and it's just not listed. Uh, we'll see as we go along, I think. So here we have an assembly guide of how you put your Magnus together. 
Um, I would recommend just from my from my experience that you don't build it before you paint it. I'll probably be painting this every single component individually, pretty much. Particularly if I'm going to follow the assembly guide, uh, like to the letter, I'm probably going to do it very strictly. Yeah, I'm surprised the arms go on so late, but I suppose they want to get the cape right first. Mm, whatever. I, basically, I'm just going to follow this to the letter. I'll probably glue the head hair on. Uh, I might glue a couple of components together, but I'm really going to probably take this one component at a time, paint it, maybe not on frame, but definitely in bits because I don't trust myself otherwise. So there's your scenic base, there, or your standard base, I suppose, uh, which conveniently has foot mounts, which is nice. Uh, and that goes on there, and then you've got all this stuff, so that's how you're getting game ready. And then over here you've got, you can build your scenic base, and then you just stick him on. Uh, nice and easy job done and a guide for the diorama do not glue to the scenic base uh, otherwise you're going to have problems now I, I'm assuming you also get all of this stuff if you buy it in the combo kit with Russ and then you get the extra big piece uh, for the two of them I'm not 100% on that one or maybe the diorama base slots into the big one uh, if I remember it correctly so uh, enough rambling about paperwork you also get a little forge world how to work with resin uh, which is kind of nice for those of us who are a bit more inexperienced. But you didn't come here for paperwork. You came here for models, didn't you? All right, here we go. I'm just going to tip these out. Makes my life easier. Right. Ha ha. Hello. Hello. Ooh. Okay, so there's your warp fire then. So let's open you, shall we? You're the bigger box. I'm just going to... Uh, anchor. Yep, I'm just going to anchor this down to stop it flipping shut again. There we go. So these are your main components. So you can see here, there's your scenic base. Oh, sorry, your diorama base, not your scenic base. Sorry, the scenic base is the small one. It's not called a gaming base. Uh, and there is, well, there's your gaming base. Nice and easy. It's uh, actually nice and flat on the bottom as well for easy attachment to the small base that I'm assuming is down well there's the scenic one and yeah that's is that a terminator base I think so if that sits on there is that a clean fit yeah it's practically a perfect fit that's interesting so I thought I always assumed it would be a slightly bigger base than a terminator but the more you know there's the body oh my goodness you you don't really appreciate how good something is until you actually see it for yourself like it looks good in the teaser images and stuff. Um, I'll put the link in the description to my review on the thoughts of the model itself, but when it's actually in your hand, oh wow, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. It's so intricate, it's actually ridiculously intricate. I'm gonna have a nightmare painting this. I'm going to have nightmares about painting this, but I'm going to enjoy it the entire time. We've got the cloak with actually predetermined places to put the feathers and the purity seals which is very convenient, thank you Forge World for making life easy. Got some rocks, some more rocks, some more rocks. I'm assuming most of those, are. I think all of those are part of the diorama base, so secondary priority as far as I'm concerned, but still, hello. Okay, let's try and uh, repack this in a nice sensible order, because, well, it's going back in the box, at least for bit because it's a bit late at night for me to start working on this yeah I, I didn't wait around uh, to do this unboxing I really did not hang about I wanted to get this thing open and start thinking um, close oh god <laughs> all right um, I'll repack this and close this off camera I'm still gonna need that lid though all right and then we have the second box which has got um, extra like um, oh, what's it called felt or whatever it's not felt uh padding i forget the official word for this stuff right now styrofoam no not styrofoam anyway whatever it's got protecty thingies so let's get those out of here and you okay i understand why because it's got all of the small pieces oh god repacking this is going to be a problem okay so there's the head i wasn't sure with the head how they were going to do it like, I wasn't sure if it was just going to be, you're going to get, like, the helmet, and then you did the hair as a separate component, but they've done it slightly differently. Uh, looks good, though. Um, 
that face is going to be fun to paint. But I bought extra paints uh, specifically for this challenge. Uh, we've got his shoulder pad with the main all-seeing eye. Uh, is that got a... Uh, I, I can't get the camera to focus because that required me to put it down. Uh, hang on. I think I might have a... Uh, hang on, I'm going to look at this myself. It's got a little XV uh, in the eyepiece. Ah, nice. It's got an XV for the 15th Legion. Good touch. And you've got the warp fire, the arms, some rocks, some warp fire shoulder pad. That's intriguing. Got the two horns for the shoulders. Not anywhere else inventive model makers and people who like memes. Okay, uh, so you lived in the first bit and then you were in the first bit. Okay, I'm, gonna say, I'm just going to unload these really carefully. So as I know exactly what lived where in terms of section, and I'm not going to drop them because that would be dumb. Right, so then you come out, and oh boy, we've got uh, a couple of chains. I, I'm sorry about the camera quality, by the way. Chains, sigils, oh heck, oh heck, oh heck, oh heck. Um, and then we've got, are these just seals? Yeah, I think these are the seals that go on the back of the cloak. So they live together. And then we have armor plating. Ah, the other hair components are there. Uh, you've got the feathers for the cloak. Uh, the book. I, th I don't know if that is the Book of Magnus itself or something else like a Tome of Power. But that might be the Book of Magnus. Uh, what's the sigil on it? Or is that just a scratch? I doubt it's a scratch. Um, what? It's a wolf. Okay, um, I'm going to try and get this to focus. I don't know if it will, but I'm going to try. Come on, camera. Come on. Yes. That's a wolf. That's a wolf symbol. I'm really sorry about shaky cam. That's a wolf sigil in the eye of that book. Why? I'm now really intrigued about this book. <laughs> okay. Forge World, you've got my attention. For all the wrong reasons, but you've got my damn attention. <laughs> okay, so those two pieces go up there, they go there, they go there. Right, and into the last section. Oh, God, the camera needs to go back into focus again. Right. So we've got the blade, the haft of the blade, more feathers, um, tabard, which is intricate as flip, for the record. The back horns, which is nice. Uh, that's an echo of Armin, or Armin's was an echo of his. And actually, you can see, or I can see, uh, that's got, it looks like the Eye of Horus. Uh, I'm going to again, I'm going to try and zoom in and my camera's going to have a hissy fit. I'm not sure that's the Eye of Horus or maybe it's just an all-seeing eye because that seems to be a thing on Magnus's shoulder pad as well. So um, that's intriguing. I'm not even sure if you can see that uh, when the final model's assembled, but if you can, that's cool. Um, you can go up there and then you've got the blade of Ammon... Uh, Anhura? Oh god, I'm gonna get. I'm struggling with names. I'm just gonna call it his sword. Oh, it's a chain sword. That's cool. I didn't realize it was uh, serrated. I'm just gonna get my camera back into its old. And now it's being outweighed. This is annoying. <laughs> Physics. Physics. Yeah, so that blade's actually slightly serrated. I, I didn't notice that. And then in this last bottom section, oh boy. We've just got a pile of warp fire and rocks. So they're primarily for the diorama base. But uh, they look pretty and they're going to be hell to paint. I'm probably going to paint the warp fire in blue. If you look at the official model, uh, the warp fire is kind of purplish. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with blue because I've got a lot of blue paint and I know how different tones of blue. So I sort of know what I'm doing with blue. Uh, so I'm probably going to do that. And that's um, that's actually everything. I wasn't quite sure how much I was going to get in here, whether I was going to get some fluff, uh, or like, proper fluff, or anything else. But uh, that's it. That is um, everything you get when you buy the model for Magnus the Red. Uh, I'm sorry about the, well, I'm sorry about the shaky cam and the lack of focus in places, and um, the fact that it wasn't very well organised. <laughs> But I'm, I'm not very good at unboxings, as I'm 
sure you've all worked out by this point. I'm not very good at unboxings. But that is it. That's what you get if you want Magnus for your Thousand Suns army or just to paint. And um, I know it's a pretty model. It's a Primark. It's supposed to be. But when you actually have it in your hands, particularly with that torso section, just the detail, the intricacy is absolutely ridiculous. So there you go. Uh, I won't ramble any longer because otherwise it will just descend into Magnus fanboying. Um, and I know that's not what people like to hear. So I do hope you've enjoyed the video. I know it's um, not my usual style and I know probably wasn't the best unboxing you'll have seen on YouTube for anything ever. And probably not for this model either. But this is going to be either my summer project or my third year project if I can pace myself. I'm planning to finish off my Prospero box, I still haven't finished it, um, and get that done and then try and get my Tau army ready before I go away uh, for my third year uh, to you, France. Uh, for those who don't, I'll fill you in a bit nearer the time, but I'm going away for my third year on a study abroad year. Uh, so I'll fill you all in and this is going to be the project I'm going to take out with me, assuming I haven't already done it. Um, I'm going to try and restrain myself though and not do it too soon. So don't expect an update on this guy too soon, uh, but... Once I make the make a start, once I've got him assembled or ready to be assembled, I've got him base coated or whatever, I'll try and get an upgrade, an update video out just to let you know how he's going. And then, of course, when the model's done, there will be a showcase video where I just show him off. Um, and then there'll be a battle report where I use him against probably another Primark if one of our other friendship group happens to get a Primark in the interim. Um, or if not, then I'm sure someone will borrow him as a proxy for Demon Magnus because yay. Uh, anyway, um, different problem for a different day. So, thank you all for watching. Uh, let me know what you think of the model in the comments below. Uh, my name is Michael for Tactica Imperialis, and I'll see you all again. Goodbye.